Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I explore NASA's Nuclear Thermal Propulsion Proposal. Uh, this is based on a presentation by Richard Ballard, the NTP Project Manager at Marshall Space Flight Center. Uh, this pr presentation was from October 29, 2019. So I don't think anything much has changed in the past year or so on this topic. Uh, we'll see. But anyway, I'll link the presentation in the video description so you can check it out. In particular, uh, this uh, proposal, this architecture, is on page 28. So right in the back of a 29-page or slide uh, presentation. And the reason I decided to put this together was because that particular uh, page on the presentation had a lot of numbers, and I like numbers. And it was nice of them to put all these numbers. I have some questions about the numbers, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, for instance, on the core, which is the back end here with the nuclear engines, it says the OMS ISP is 500 seconds. I'm not entirely sure how they get that. Uh, maybe it's a mix of the nuclear engines plus the RCS, but no natural OMS system is going to have 500 seconds. So anyway, uh, another thing is they say that the NTP engine thrust is 25,000 pounds force, which is uh, 111 kilonewtons. And I'm assuming that that is uh, each of the three engines. They have three engines. I've decided to just add a new configuration to my uh, uh, Timberwind engines because they didn't really have a different model in particular, so I assume this will work out as a stand-in for now. And so our engines have each 111 kilonewtons of thrust based on the fat on the burn times that they seem to have for the for the various maneuvers on that page. And um, we, as they specified, 875 seconds of ISP. I've given it 60 ignitions. The one question was the engine mass, which they did not have but they gave the stage dry mass for this. Now, the dry mass for this that they gave was 26.18 tons. The dry mass for this, uh, one of these tanks, was 10.7 tons, roughly. And so I extrapolated from that that these engines were accounting for at least 10 tons. Uh, so that's 3 tons each. So I made them 3.32 tons and worked from there and added the rest of the dry mass to the tank. So we'll have the right dry mass overall. And uh, we've got the right tank diameters. They've specified the tank diameters. I made sure we had the right um, hydrogen. Uh, they specified the amount of main usable propellant in specific kilograms of hydrogen. They said this had 13,449 kilograms. They said uh, 27,761 kilograms and we have three of these duplicates. And then the HAB mass, the gross mass, they specified 46,783 kilograms at Transmars injection. I have assumed that that includes the food and water and oxygen because otherwise this should not be 46 tons. That's really heavy. Um, so what we have here is uh, actually 47 tons and that's because I neglected the mass of one docking port and I slept on an extra pair of solar panels. So, uh, in general, I took out the mass for the docking port for the modules. So, each module, the docking ports are, um, there are two of them on each one except for the tail. And they're 0.25 tons a piece. And also, I took out the mass of the solar panels as 0.2 tons when making the dry mass of these. So uh, everything else should be exactly what they had it. So it's just a little bit of a fudge factor on solar panel mass. Oh, I didn't want four solar panels on this one. I only wanted two. So, okay, a little bit lighter now. Uh, but anyway, uh, RCS should, is just, uh, they said hydrazine NTO, I've made it MMH and NTO, uh, which I assume is what they really meant. <laughs> so, um, I, did, I don't know exactly whether this portion was going along with the HAB or with that, but for our purposes, I decided to stick it on with the this uh, uh, stick it on with the HAB instead of this part, so that we can maneuver the HAB independently. Um, so the question is whether these parts work is the first thing. 
but more to my own purposes. I'm worried about... Uh, so they had the RCS on top of each of these tanks like this. And I'm not sure I can dock like this, right? Because translation with docking is tough when you've got the RCS ports high up instead of on the center line uh, in line with the center of mass. So this is going to be a pain in the rear end for docking. And that's what I'm going to test, whether I can dock this together. Okay, uh, that's, that's, all, all, that's all we're doing today. We're going to try and launch him. Now, there's another question when it comes to trying to launch him. They want this in a high orbit, so it doesn't take a whole lot to go Transmars injection. They estimated the Delta V for Transmars injection was 622 meters per second. And normally it's 3,600 uh, 3, to 4,000. So we need to put this really high up. Uh, they were talking about, you know, one of those halo orbits or something like that. So, yeah, we'll see. The, the, I, I'm presuming that they were planning to use SLS Block 1B because each of these modules is 45 tons. And I think that's about what uh, SLS Block 1B would do to the kind of orbit that they are looking for. But we'll see. So here we go to the launch pad, and I'm going to launch each of these in turn, uh, starting, I think, with one of the propellant tanks. That's another thing we need to worry about MLI layers. Every time I set to 100, it keeps dropping them down to 10 for some reason, from some annoying reason. MLI layers are what prevent boil off of the hydrogen. So if we don't have enough of this insulation, this multi-layer insulation, we're going to end up having no hydrogen left by the time we need to leave. So it's super important that it doesn't keep reducing the number of MLI layers on my tanks. Uh, I don't know. It's complicated. Anyway, so we'll see. Okay, so here we go. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. It looks like we've got the fairings in the wrong place here, though. So, standard SLS Block 1B. Uh, no frills, nothing surprising. Um, we're testing it like that. And again, the payload is roughly 45 tons. It looks like, well, 44 tons in this case. So we'll see where we get with that. I did get us to a Mars window, but we'll see how it goes. We have to boost this payload up to some sort of high orbit, but I don't know exactly what kind of high orbit I want to get it at, because we, we can't really do halo orbits in Kerbal Space Program, not without uh, Principia, and even then it would be curious and interesting to uh, do all this business. First of all, I need to check out that the parts work and I can actually dock things. But I'll get it into a convincing sort of situation as much as possible. One with procedural fairings because the fairings for this mod didn't seem to be decoupling right. And again, I'm using an old version of this particular mod. It's from 1.3.1, uh, so things may be fixed. Okay, booster set. Okay, fairing set. Off they go. And there is our tank with two docking ports, of course. And the solar panels. I mean, when you think about their plan, they don't just need to have the hydrogen not boil off while it's in low Earth orbit and waiting for a transfer. That would be relatively easy. Um, they have to have it not boil off for the entire trip until Earth orbit insertion right at the end, after two years and a half. So I don't know how they plan on doing that. They don't seem to have an Asus sort of uh, that that sort of fan thing, the you know, the cone of sun reflection that I made for the Asus depot. They don't have that on the diagram or anything. But the tanks are fairly massive. The dry mass of this tank is 10 tons, 10.7 tons, inert mass 13 tons, uh, the propellant's 27 tons, so it's like basically 
one third. I mean, there's also that's the main propellant. There's also RCS propellant, which is four tons. So it's about a quarter of the mass is dry mass, which is a pretty big dry mass. So they they might be packing a whole lot of insulation or some other way to keep the hydrogen cool. I'm not sure if we can match that sort of thing with real fuels right now. We'll see how it does. Okay, separation and ignition. That inner stage always blows up. Okay, so here we go with this stage. Yay. I mean, I could get this to the moon, but not capture it around the moon. Well, maybe it'd be tight. Uh, as long as you had a high capture around the moon. Okay, I was a bit slow in getting that vertical speed down, but... We'll be in a somewhat lopsided orbit. And that'll do for now. 373 by 165. We've got 3,548 left. And that would be enough to transfer to the moon and then capture into a very high orbit. Uh, so a kind of halo orbit with uh, one end extremely high. So it's possible to do that. But to transfer to Mars from that kind of orbit, I would need NASA's help. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try and figure out my own solution uh, with the help of MechJeb. And we'll see what I get. So I'm not going to go into that kind of orbit, but I'll try and find some other orbit that will be easy. Uh, well, actually it might be harder to rendezvous from the orbit. Well, we'll see. Anyway, we're down here. Let's see what we can do. Okay, I've decided that the most I want to do is get into this two-day orbit uh, so that rendezvous will be, I wouldn't say easy, but easier than it could be in an uneven orbit. And so we'll use not all of the fuel in the EUS like this. And hopefully our periapsis around here will be around the right point where we would do a burn to exit and head for Mars. But then there's the whole inclination thing, which is more complicated. So anyway, we're going to do this initial burn to boost our orbit. And then this will be placed there. And it'll have to use its own MMH and NTO to figure itself out after that. And again, that's four tons of MMH and NTO per their spec. All right, well, probably have a long burn ahead of us. And then other stuff is gonna have to rendezvous with this. And shut down. We're going to release from the stage now. And RCS the rest of the way to a two-day period. And I'll take it. I'll take it. Anyway, uh, let me launch. I think launching the propulsion module next would be best. And then we'll add more tanks after that. Okay, so I've waited a day, and so our NTP tank is at apoapsis because it's in a two-day orbit, and we've got the core with the nuclear engines here. But maybe we should just wait until it comes down and try and do a direct... But then uh, the Space Center is on this side. So... Well, I, I guess it might be possible. Let's give it a go. So we'll wait one more day until it's close, and then we'll adjust from there. So it's there. It's periapsis is an hour and 32 minutes. Um, that's not the best timing, because it's not going to take us an hour and 32 minutes to get right there. I think I'm going to go with that and see how that works out for us. Okay. Can we do sort of a direct transfer to this thing? SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. launch. It's really about launch site location relative to your target. At a time when the relative inclination is good enough. 
people seem to think that there's some magic about the way uh, launches from Baikonur work that they can rendezvous with the ISS quickly. It's not magic. It's because of the relative inclination of the ISS to Baikonur and their ability to wait until the ISS is in the best location for a quick rendezvous. Whereas at Cape Canaveral there's too much of a relative inclination and so they can't wait as well. Okay, booster set. I'll just dump fairings now. Should be fine. Okay, separation of the ignition and explosion of the interstage. And nozzle extension. Getting closer to orbit. It sure looks like we're gonna get there too early though. We can overshoot and come back in, but that's not the most efficient thing to do. I think I'm already going too far. Okay, so not the best timing ever. I should have waited a little bit longer, it looks like. The longer we wait, the uh, worse the inclination difference gets, but ultimately I think that was probably more manageable than this is going to be. Okay, so it's weird, but we're going to do this 2,757 meter per second burn down here, and then we're going to do another burn up there to rendezvous with it. And that'll be 536. We have that amount. So hopefully that'll work out for us. Just a little bit of a timing mistake there. But this is a little bit more interesting than the ISS orbit. And... Well, let's see what it's really telling me here. Just using RCS for this bit. I might actually need to tone down the thrust on these RCS thrusters. I made them quite strong, 2.4 kilonewtons, basically shuttle level. Considering we have so many of them on the overall vessel. And they guzzle the fuel quite a lot. This particular module doesn't have as much of the MMH and NTO as the others though. The nuclear engines that they probably have are not bimodal, but these sort of accidentally are, so I didn't need solar panels here, They're, it's being recharged by the engines. I'll probably have to disable that so that they're more realistic and then slap some solar panels on. So nuclear engines uh, get really complicated if you want to use them to also power the vessel. Uh, I don't know, maybe, yeah, they didn't really specify. All I know is the other modules had solar panels on it. It wasn't clear that this one did, but anyway. We'll see what is best. Nope, there it is. The NTP tank. But the trick is docking, like I said. I'm not too sure how good docking is going to be like this. Uh, let's do the rendezvous first. Rendezvous first. Okay, don't wander off. Uh, it's wandering off. Oh, shoot. Uh, I don't want to use RCS for it, but I think we're going to have to just use RCS for it. Alright. Off you go. Well, I'll have this do this part, but then I'm going to have the other side do the actual docking, I think, because it's lighter. Well, no, it's not. Um, but I think more of the mass of this is down below here. So the mass is closer to the RCS thrusters on the uh, NTP tank. Okay, hopefully it can remain steady there. Uh huh. Okay. It's gonna be complicated, alright. Because the uh, thrusters are not at the ideal location. Especially for translation. For rotation, they're fine. For translation, they're horrible. Okay, let's see. Let's try and get some help from this side in terms of just orientation. I do think in this case SmartASS's kill rotation is better than SAS. 
so I'm probably going to use that. I do want the roll to match so that the solar panels eventually get all in order. Smart ASS is making numerous adjustments here. Hopefully it's not too wiggly. It doesn't look it. But I might be getting lulled into a false sense of security here. It looks, it's looking pretty good on this approach. We're taking it calmly. Okay, looking pretty good. I decided to use the common berthing mechanism docking ports because um, they're the largest ones available. Even though probably they'll use the NASA docking ports, those are a little bit smaller as far as our models in the game are concerned. So thought this would be better. Okay, and we are docked. All right, so it's doable, even though the, dot, the RCS ports are so far off. And it just takes a little bit of delicacy. Uh, we are looking good here. So for now, I'll uh, keep it to this in this video. And in the next video, I'll send the other modules up. And we'll try and eventually send four Kerbals over to Mars. The HAB module has food, water, and oxygen for four Kerbals for a full Mars thing. So trip there, stay, trip back. So it's got all that food, water, and oxygen, which I figured I could fit considering how heavy that module, the HAB module is, you know, 43 tons or so. Uh, so we that's plenty of room for food, water, and oxygen. And yeah, uh, we'll see how that works. But I expect that without NASA's help and given the tight margins, again, uh, in the plan it said, 622 meters per second for trans Mars injection. We are definitely going to, even though we're in this high orbit here, um, so this two day orbit, and we're expecting to do the final burn at periapsis to exit, it's still probably got to take us a little bit more than 622 meters per second. So, and then uh, Mars orbit insertion, they have 1668 meters per second, but that's for a very particular opportunity in 2013. 33 and we don't have that right now but this is not that opportunity so i'm expecting more than 2000 meters per second to capture around mars trans earth injection is probably gonna cost more so whether the kerbals that are ever going to get back home i don't know and then there's the whole boil off situation as well so there's a lot of uncertainty here and we'll just put it together and see how far i get as far as this is concerned uh if i could convince everybody to let me have lighter fuel tanks instead of having fuel tanks that are one quarter of the total mass of the module. That would be super helpful. But we'll keep it to the numbers they had in the presentation for now and see what I can do. But I expect I'll need NASA's help if I actually want to do this full mission. And uh, apparently, uh, given what they have in the architecture, it would have to rendezvous with a lander at the location. This deep space habitat they have on top of it is just a, it's just a hab. There's no lander involved. So yeah, that's a whole separate thing if you're wondering. Anyway, so with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.